Hi. Hi, Doc. Hi again. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you also to everyone that's watching us today. We've had a little bit of a technical difficulty with our connection, but I think we're back and it should be working well. So again, today, what we're going to be talking about is LASIK. It's one of the most frequently talked about, asked about topics here in Asian Eye. So what is it? Who is it for? Are there any alternatives to LASIK? Those are the things that we're going to talk about today. And joining us today is Dr. Robert Ang. So to give you a little bit more of a background about Dr. Ang, he took up his pre-medicine degree in UP, in, in UP, where he took up the intermed course. So that's a faster course. He was able to finish that a little bit quicker than some other doctors. And then after that, he, he went through his internship, his medical degree, as well as his residency in ophthalmology in UPPGH. So for a lot of the people that are wondering, like, where did my doctor study? What kind of training did he have? So that's where um, Dr. Ang started. And then later on, he pursued fellowship training uh, in the U.S. for glaucoma and cornea and refractive surgery. And he did that at the Harvard Medical School in Massachusetts in the United States. So another thing that's unique about Dr. Ang is that aside from doing his clinical practice, he also uh, authors a lot of different book chapters and international publications. And he's also a key resource speaker in lo local and international conferences. So why does that matter? So for you as a patient, it's important that you know that your doctor doesn't just practice uh, practice medicine. He's not just a LASIK doctor. He's also the resource speaker. So other doctors look to him when it comes to their own training. A lot of other doctors ask for his advice when it comes to doing um, certain kinds of procedures, especially if they're very new. So he's an active researcher with interest in refractive options such as LASIK, ICL, Supracore, as well as things, things like corneal inlays, as well as cataract and glaucoma. And in fact, he was a clinical investigator in pioneering treatments such as Supracore, mixed with eye stent, and a cornea, a camera corneal inlay, to name a few. He's also a multi-awarded doctor. So he's received several best paper awards from the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, or the ASCRS, the Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology, as well as the Asia Pacific Association of Cataract and Refractive Surgeons. So he's also received quite a, a number of um, recognitions. So he's a Certified Educator Award from APA CRS. He's a Top Gun Instructor Award from the ASCRS, as well as uh, he's known, uh, he was recognized with the Presidential Recognition Award by the American Academy, Academy of Ophthalmology, as well as he was voted as one of the uh, Powerless 100 by the Ophthalmologist Magazine. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Ang, at the same time, he's also the Director of Asian Eyes Cornea and Refractive Surgery Fellowship Program. So what that means for you as a patient is that your doctor doesn't just practice, he also trains the next generation of ophthalmologists, the ones who are interested in becoming LASIK doctors themselves. So Dr. Ang has been doing LASIK mm. surgeries for years now. He's one of the pioneers here in the Philippines. So when you have a question about LASIK, he's the right guy to call. So first things first, siguro doc, why is it that LASIK is so popular and what are the benefits of doing LASIK? Because a lot of patients are so interested in getting the procedure done, but a lot of them are also um, not so sure about what the procedure is all about. So let me, hello audience, uh, sorry for the technical glitch, but uh, let me give you a background of laser eye surgery. No, Because everybody uh, hears about laser surgery so that they don't have to wear glasses. The first laser surgeries happened in 1988 to 1990 and it started with a procedure called PRK so photorefractive keratectomy which is a surface treatment for laser then in the late 1990s between 1995 to 1998 that's when LASIK started so LASIK or laser in situ keratomyosis means you cut a flap and do LASIK laser surgery what happened was because of the flap healing became faster so in prk healing is slower three days of pain one week of blurriness it's still being done today but most patients want lasik because one day healing and visual recovery is two to three days so it revolutionized laser eye surgery that you come in on a friday and by sunday you're driving so that's why many, many people want LASIK and millions all over the world have had LASIK. And here in the Philippines, thousands, tens of thousands, or I think 
close to more than 50,000 to 100,000 people have had laser eye surgery or LASIK. So I think that's what made it popular is the quick healing and fast visual recovery. Okay. So, so Doc, um, kapag sinabi kasi laser, a lot of people think that basta laser pwede siya sa lahat ng eye conditions. So, anong, what conditions are treated by laser? So, uh, yung laser kasi, lasers in general are machines that direct a concentrated energy and deliver it through the air by more or less light energy. So, in the eye, the eye is one of the areas where laser laser technology has become so popular and so widespread use because your eye you don't want to cut your eye and mm -hmm. the eye can uh, uh, light can penetrate inside the eye to do treatments that's why lasers are very popular now there are like six or seven applications of laser in the eye it's not just your brain for example, if you are diabetic and you have bleeding inside the eye, your blood vessels at the back of the eye can be lasered so it stops bleeding. Something like that. Or glaucoma or uh, cataract surgery now, we can use lasers for certain steps. So the laser not only is a treatment uh, tool, but it's also a cutting tool. So before we use knives or blades, but now we can use lasers to cut. So that's why um, when you come to us, mm -hmm. we check your eye and um, most centers like us, we have all the lasers that you can ever need. So we will tell you what, if you are, uh, if your treatment will need lasers, we will tell you what kind of laser you need. But the most popular for all the laser treatments is LASIK or laser eye surgery. Okay. So specifically, Doc, laser eye surgery is more for the treatment kung may grado. So grado. whether you're sighted, farsighted, or kung may astigmatism ka, or maybe even a combination of two. Whether you're sighted cuts, may astigmatism, or farsighted at may astigmatism. Basta yung mata mo, kailangan mo ng some kind of eyeglasses or contact lens para palinawin, then you have grade or mm -hmm. you have astigmatism okay. or if you are above 40 years old you have pressed biopia or hirap na sa reading so yung grado mo when you are below 40 can be grade and astigmatism lang mm -hmm. when contact lens can a grade lang or grade and astigmatism tawag the toric contact lens pero pag 45 years old ka na 50 years old ka na at may grade ka Malamang yung glasses mo is like a progressive glasses, may grade for far and may grade for reading. Okay. So, yun yung mga factors dyan. Okay. So, in general, Doc, when it comes to having a, a refractive error of some kind, any signs or symptoms that we would recognize? Actually, um, yung the Asian population kasi, the Asian population in general, have... Uh, nearsightedness in the race no kaya if you if you go to any airport in the world for example and you meet, you see many people usually the asians the chinese the malays the filipinos they will have glasses or contact lenses whereas the caucasians the whites they they don't have as much glasses as the asians so it's probably race it's probably genetics and probably activities based so you ma uh that's why there are researches where they study children because the more they go to school and the more computer work, reading work, the grade goes up very high. So may mga researches on that. And wala, we cannot, so far, we cannot stop it from happening. You know, you ha we have to use our eyes. So the only thing we need to do is when you're young and we cannot do any type of procedure, like when you're below 18, we usually don't do any surgery on you, you no? Know? So you're you're stuck with glasses or contact lenses, and we wait till you're 18 and above to do something for you. That's when most most uh, parents bring their kids or the 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 young adult themselves come to see us. Okay, so in that case, doc, um, I one of the things that I always hear you say is that to find out kung LASIK is right for you is that you really just have to undergo LASIK screening. So why is it so important uh, to get the LASIK screening done? 
and what are the things what are the factors that you're looking at when you do the lasik screening so people most of you most of you uh whether you're young or you're above 40 50 years old most people have no pathology or no disease in the eye for example wala kang glaucoma wala kang cataract most people just have a problem with gray now but you don't know if that's true or not so when a person or a patient wants to know if you're a good candidate for LASIK or it's safe for you, we tell you to come. Come see us in uh, in our Rockwell facility, which is our main facility or some of our satellite clinics, and we will do what we call a LASIK screening. The LASIK screening is a set of many tests. So each each probably each center in the world that has LASIK machine, they all have their own system of screening. Now, what you will notice for people who have come to see us, especially here in our main facility, you will notice that our screening is the most thorough because we have several layers of machines that mm -hmm. check and counter check your eye. So, for example, corneal thickness, the thickness of the front of your eye is the, probably the most important factor to know if you're a candidate or not, and corneal shape. So we have three, three machines that test that, and the redundancy, or kaya inuulit-ulit yun, para sigurado, sigurista kasi kami na pag sinabi ko sa yung pasado ka, sure, pasado ka, hindi yung parang isang machine, pasado ka. Pag isang machine, pasado ka, Isang machine, di ka pasado. Isang machine, pasado. Kasi sabihin ko rin sa'yo na one out of three is you're not qualified. So suspicious yan. So you have to know because there, there are risks if you push it. No? And then I will tell you, oh, maybe this other procedure is better. The ICL is better. Ganon. So um, our screening takes about three to four hours here in Rockwell. We don't shortcut. Um, we that only do measurements of your eye. We check for cataract, we check for glaucoma, we check for diabetic retinopathy, we check everything. So it's it's a word, it may be more tedious, but it's worth your while to have a full, it's like an executive checkup of your eye. Okay, so in, in a lot of ways, when you undergo LASIK screening, regardless of whether you choose to go through with it or not, at the very least, what you receive is what you said, Doc, it's an executive checkup for your eye. You know exactly the condition of your eye if you're at risk of other things and if in fact my risk of developing another condition we can deal with that first we can you, at least as a patient alam mo agad na okay ito muna ang aayusin natin or ito muna yung siguraduhin natin na will make it appropriate for you to do LASIK or not and the good thing that you said doc is at least my alternatives yes kasi una una kailangan sure tayo na walang ibang problema yung mata mo Yun ang una -una. Kasi uh, hindi lang grado yung chine-check namin. No? Siyempre, uh, iba grado chine-check. Of course, grado is what we will treat, but we check all the other things. And then, that's when uh, yung nga, yung marami kasing tanong about, paano yun pag hindi ako pasado? Ang gagawin ko, di ba? Yun yung, and then, many people come to us kasi they will screen elsewhere and hindi sila pasado. So, they want to know the alternatives. Okay, and in that case, though, uh, one of the another frequent question that I, I hear a lot is, "Nakakatakot kasi daw magpalisik, kasi buwa balik ba yung grado?" So eventually, let's say nagpalisik ako this year, baka in two years kailangan ko siyang pagawa ulit. Is this true or is lasik permanent? So ganito kasi yun, yung the mere fact that we the the concept of lasik is the cornea, the front part of the eye binabawasan natin yung tissue. The laser vaporizes the tissue. Binabawasan natin yung kapal. So, permanent yung pagbawas ng kapal. However, number one, we will still grow older. Lahat tayo tatanda pa. So, yung mga taong never had LASIK in their life, alam nyo naman na siguro every few years, nagbabagong grado nyo at kaya nga kayo pupunta ulit, bibili ulit ng panibagong salamin kasi nagbago yung grado nyo. Bakit ang nagbabago? Kasi tumatanda ka. Number two is yung pag-abuso ng mata nyo, di ba? E kung 
12 hours a day ka na sa computer like a call center person or or yung anak nyo eh naglulo at kailan o nagbe medicine at kailangan mag-aral na 10 to 12 hours a day the eyeball is strained and nag-elongate and change your grade but not majority of the patient this is like a minority of patients so most of the time what patients ask me oh babalik ba ho yung grado ko sabi ko most likely sa amin sa statistics namin sa Asian eye no yung kasi pag bumalik ang grado mo then babalik ka sa akin say mo doc anong gagawin ko bumalik grado ko then ililaser ka ulit natin we call it a touch up for enhancement so sa amin over the past, I've been doing LASIK here for 20 years. So over the 20 years, our enhancement or touch-up rate is about 2%. Now, bakit? Number one, tumanda ka. Number two, activities mo. Number three, sometimes in some women who get pregnant, yung hormonal change mo induces some change in your eye. That's true whether you had LASIK or not, no? Pero siyempre, kung nagpalisi ka, at siyempre, nagpalisi yung patient sa akin, 22 years old. Ngayon, 28 na siya, nagka-baby siya, balik siya sa akin, 29 years old. Ah, nagbago, nagkaroon, yung liba, 700 grade niya, nagkaroon ulit siya, zero grade niya after lazy, kaya niya for 7 years. Then after that, oh, nagkaroon siya ng 75 or 100. Siyempre, nabawasan ng konti. Hindi babalik yung 700, ah. Babalik lang, 75, 100. Pero feeling niya, look, it's not as clear as before, eh then pwede namin i-touch up. So, yung touch up rate namin is about 1.8 to 2%. So, out of all the the thousands and thousands that we've done over the past 20 years, 2% is the rate na magta-touch up. Yung iba, may bumalik na grade, ayaw na magpa-touch up kasi masaya naman sila na bumaba na yung grade nila. Pero hindi pwede kasi na tumanda ka na hindi nagbagong grade mo. Kasi tumanda ka eh. Parang weight yan eh. Parang hair yan. Numa ko. Diba? Parang lahat tayo tumanda eh. Ganun talaga. No? No, there are just some changes in in the way that our bodies work yes. as time passes. Yes, but the 98% of our patients continue not to wear glasses for the next 15-20 years. So it's really worth it. Kasi imagine mo yung gagasusin mo sa salamin and contact lens every year for 15 years. So a lot of people change every year, every two years when it comes to their frames or even the contact lenses, like the switch ng brands or maybe the grade changes so they go up. Ganon. Nabilang na nila yun eh. Pag yung mga taong pupunta dito, nabilang nila na how much will I spend for glasses or contact? How much did I spend for the past five years? And how much will I spend for the next 10 to 20 years? Then if I have LASIK, oh, it must move running LASIK or even ICL case of all the contact lenses or glasses, then in the end, the economics work. Okay. In that case, Doc, siguro, just so that our viewers have a better idea of how exactly does the LASIK get done now? And then how how quickly is the surgery done? So let me explain this. Ano? The, the, the first, when we screen you, no, if you qualify for LASIK, we do LASIK. LASIK means uh, we do bladeless LASIK or femtosecond laser LASIK. So, bladeless. Ibig sabihin nun, dati kasi, the instrument to cut the flap was a machine with a blade. No? But more than 10 years ago, we bought this expensive laser to cut your flap. So, it's bladeless now. So, the bladeless LASIK means a laser will cut a flap. So, it's like your eye. We cut a flap. We open. It's like the hood of a car. Then we laser with another laser. Then we put the flap back. So two lasers are used per eye in LASIK. And it usually takes about 10 minutes for me to do one, one eye. So in a half hour, you're done. It's painless. You're away. Now, there are times when you don't qualify for LASIK. Mm -hmm. Then we have to do PRK. PRK means we don't cut the flap. We just laser the surface, and then the treatment's done. Okay? okay. So these two are laser procedures, PRK and LASIK. Both are good, but more people like LASIK because the healing's faster. Now, sometimes when you come for screening, number one, your cornea is too thin. You were born with a thin cornea. Mm -hmm. Number two, you are born with an irregular cornea. 
Number three, your grade is very high. For example, 700, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 1,800. Mm -hmm. Place the, more, the higher your grade, the more cornea we need to remove. But we cannot remove too much of your cornea na sobrang nipis na. Pag mas man, iniwan namin super nipis yung cornea mo, it weakens the cornea and that can deform when you age. So may okay. safety protocol kami na hanggang dyan lang ang bawas. Okay. So if, if lalampas ka ron, then we recommend ICL or implantable contact lens. So those that have thin corneas or very high grade, the implantable contact lens is the best procedure. No more laser, just mm -hmm. put this contact lens inside the eye. So the ICL naman is something that I've been doing for the past 10 years and it's a, it's now the top of the line technology to get rid of your glasses. So if you magsalamin and you do enough research online, you will know that overseas, the, the choices have changed. No? Ibig sabihin is the ICL now is the choice with the clearest vision, clearer than LASIK. If you okay. want vision clearer than LASIK, it's an ICL. The only problem with ICL is it's more expensive. But it's a contact lens that we put inside the eye. And that's why more and more people with high grade come to me, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500. Before, they, they have no choice. Kawawa naman sila, no? Mahal-mahal ng glasses, mahal-mahal ng contact lens. Yes. Now, have something. So, all of these have solutions. Now, the other thing that we have is when you reach 40 years old, so 40 years old is a critical age in the eye. No, Below 40, your eye has a lens and this lens of the eye is an autofocus mechanism for near, far, near, far. So you okay. just put your glasses on, then you can see near, you can see far. But when you reach 40 and above, this autofocus mechanism weekends and humihina yung near. That's why your parents, your uncles, they wear reading glasses. Uh -oh. okay? And keep their phones farther from them. Parang para mag sila, or mahilap magbasan dyaryo, mayroon kumain. So, yung mga above 40, yung iba sa kanila, never wore glasses when they were young, and now they're wearing reading glasses. Some of them, wore glasses or contact lens when they were young and then na, before they only need glasses for far now they need glasses for far and reading double na kaya progressive or bifocal so yung mga taong lampas 40 pero ay gusto mong luminaw yung vision meron kaming yung laser namin dito sa Asian ay yung Bosch and Long laser meron kami isang technology na kami lang meron dito tawag dito supracore Yung supracore means, mag improve yung far mo, pero may reading ka. So, parang progressive treatment siya. Mm -hmm. So, before supracore, we will make your far better if you were 50 years old, pero mag-reading glass ka pa rin. Kasi wala ka ng supracore. No? Ngayon, may supracore kami, then may tutulong sa reading mo. So, ngayon, the age group of LASIK, before was 18 to 40 years old. Now, dito sa amin, if we treat from 18 to 60 years old, kasi yung 40 to 60, meron na kami laser for them. So, okay. iba, iba yung group ng 18 to 40, iba yung group ng 40 to 60, pero meron kami product option. option. So, depende na sa patient. So, ang importante kasi is you come for screening kasi malalaman ko what, what, to, what to tell you na option mo. Okay. In that case, Doc, when it comes to some of the risks, naman, some of the things that uh, patients also need to keep in mind, with because what, with whatever surgery, naman, there's always a risk that's attached to it. So what are the things, siguro, that any patient should be aware of when they undergo, whether it's LASIK, supracore, or PRK? So um, you all surgeries, all procedures that touch your eye or alter your body has some risks, medical risk kasi ano to, medicine to, you know? each person heals differently, each person reacts to the laser differently. So, the, the 
the the worst risk of all in in any surgery is infection. So we don't want an infection to happen to you. The infection can come from here. The infection can come from home. Dito sa amin kasi, we make sure that you are uh, lahat kasi ng ginagamit namin disposable. Eh. We wear gloves, we wear cap, we wear mask, we wear everything. Even now with COVID, we wear double layer. So, dito sa amin, very unlikely na manggaling dito yung dubi or bacteria. So, after surgery, we give you antibiotics, we give you a list of do's and don'ts, you follow that para hindi ka magka-infection. Infection is bad but very rare. Maybe 0.1% or less infection. Number two, even if we do a perfect job, minsan, feeling mo kulang yung linaw. Alam mo yung, kita mo, pero feeling mo kulang yung linaw. Di ba? Pwede ganun eh. So, ang ginagawa ko kasi, the important thing for me is, we have a system here na you have to come for follow-up. Kasi, we wait for three months for you to heal. And after three months, I will evaluate and you tell me, Doc, kulang yung linaw eh. O kung kulang yung linaw, di ka gamitin yung laser to adjust your eye. Pero as I said, less than 2% that happens. Pero pwede kasing kulang yung linaw. No? Number three is all procedures in the eye, whether laser surgery, cataract surgery, the lighting is very important. Mas bright, mas malinaw lahat. Okay. Or dark, mas dim lahat. So nighttime and nighttime driving are different from daytime and daytime driving. There is a decrease in contrast, meaning kita mo but not so sharp because there's not enough light. That's natural. Yes. Another thing at night is there's some glare or a halo effect. What is a glare? When you look at the light, para may rays around it, that's glare or starburst. And then sometimes may light as may halo, may halo effect, no? Because the you altered the surface of the eye or the lens or the cataract surgery altered it. So you see some glare or halos. The good thing about it is the modern lasers now, the glare and halos are not as bad as the lasers 10 years ago. So if okay. you, you make sure you ask, when you go to a laser center, maybe you want to ask, kailan pa yung laser nila? Because if luma yon, then the, the pattern of firing might be that they induce more glare halos. So, sa gabi mo makikita yon. And then, the most common no, na discomfort is dry eye. So, dry eye is the more common complaint. So, you need to put drops for at least six months to a year. Other than that, all the other... Nobody goes blind unless you get an infection. Uh, very rare that there's a complication during surgery because it's bladeless. So very rare yung surgical complications. Usually the, the surgery is the easy part. It's the healing that's the more difficult part. Doc, kasi I, it's one thing that I've heard. I think I've ha had some people say na, is it ever possible na kapag nagpa-laser ako, yung pwedeng gumalaw ako bigla during the surgery tapos mali yung pagka-fire ng laser. Possibly ba yun, Doc? So... So laser namin dito, our laser has like a six-dimensional tracker. Ano yung sabihin ng tracker? Look at my eye. When I'm looking at the camera, it can twitch, it can move, no? And then sobrang lakas ng ilaw, sometimes the patient moves their eye. So first, we have an instrument to keep your eyelids open. You cannot blink during surgery. Number two is our laser has a tracker. Parang radar siya na kahit gumalaw yung mata mo, susunod lang yung laser eh. And then if it moves too much, the laser will stop. So movement during surgery is compensated by this tracker. Kaya hindi ako takot, no? I just need to make sure that you're calm. Because syempre, alam mo, ibang tao takot, mag, ibang tao takot malikot. No? So kailangan lang kausapin sila na look at the blinking light. That's it. And then kami na yung bahala. You just have to keep steady for 10 minutes for me. 10 minutes. That's it. No? So... Uh, movement is now compensated by a high-definition high tracker that we have. Okay. And then, Doc, kasi you were saying that when it comes to doing LASIK as compared to something like PRK, syempre, mas mabilis ng recovery. And even more so when you do something like ICL, even faster, even a more comfortable experience ng pasyente afterwards. But what are some things, na let's say, nagpa-LASIK ako today, 
in the next 30 days, ano yung mga hindi ka pa pwedeng gawin? So, pag, for example, today I just did LASIK on several patients, no? The instructions are, so if you have LASIK, so LASIK and implantable contact lens, they're fast healing and fast recovery. PRK, slow healing, slow recovery. So the fast healing, fast recovery means if you have surgery, for example, on a Friday, mm -hmm. you have the weekend to rest. So Friday, surgery, you go home, we tell you to take a nap for two to three hours so that you don't move your eye, don't rub your eye, you're sleeping. The next day, I see you for checkup. So I'm here Saturdays. Saturdays, I see my post-ops or surgeries the day before and some screenings. I see you the next day to see how you're doing. Most likely, you will tell me, may konting katre, may konting puing, but the next day, you will not be wearing your eyeglasses anymore. You can see well, but it's not yet the final vision because the eye still needs to heal. So 24 hours, the flap is closed, the wound is closed, but it hasn't fully healed. So the vision will improve. One week, there's another 10% improvement. Two weeks, there's a 10% improvement. So by two weeks, more or less, you're near 100% na of your vision. Pero, because your vision has recovered the next day, by Sunday, two days later, you can probably drive, and by Monday, you're back to work. So that's why the favorite day of my patients is Friday, because Monday, they're back to work. So absent one day from work, and they're back. No, e lalo na ngayon, Nobody's at work. That's why we have many patients now coming for LASIK. And because everybody's not working or work from home. Yes, it gives them a little bit of a chance to anyway, to give talk, yourself to a little yes. bit longer to recover. Mm -hmm. Okay. And talk when it comes to uh, the different kinds of LASIK. Because we know that there are a lot of different centers that offer LASIK. And I'm sure... Uh, it, it can be easy to think that all LASIK or all lasers are made the same. But what are the things that uh, that indicate a difference? What are the things that would set apart the different technologies that are used? So I'm not a laser salesman, but in, in the world, there are like four major brands of laser and uh, they all have differences. So our laser is one of two or three German brands, like their American brands. And da dalawa lang ang gumagawa ng laser sa mundo. In the US, there are two companies. And in Germany, there are two, two companies or three companies. So our laser is a Bosch and Lomb laser. It's a German company. If, you, if you've worn glasses or contact lens before, you know what Bosch and Lomb is. If you, yes. if you use Ray-Ban sunglasses, you know what Bosch and Lomb is because the Ray-Ban was made by Bosch and Lomb. So um, when the, the lasers, in general, there are two types of laser treatments in any machine. One is called the standard LASIK and one is called the wavefront guided LASIK. So yung wavefront guided LASIK, ang tawag sa Bosch and Lomb system, Zyoptics. And that treatment is mas pino or mas fine-tune yung the way it measures your eye and the way it fires the laser. So the, the eye has grade and the eye has distortions or aberrations. So kami, I've been using this uh, grade and aberration lazy called Zyoptics for the past 20 years. That's why the benefits of using this higher grade wavefront guided LASIK are number one, vision at night is better than the non-wavefront. So as I told you, nighttime vision is always lessened because of this contrast. But with wavefront guided, you have better contrast than non-wavefront guided. Number two is the glare and halos is less with wavefront guided LASIK than non-wavefront guided LASIK. That's why all our patients here, I do these dioptics because I know everybody will drive at night, or most people will want to drive at night. So uh, there will be still some glare and halos. Now, it's not like zero, but it's less and it will lessen over time compared to the non-standard. So ito yung parang high, higher end, the wavefront guided, or what we call the optics basic. 
Uh, I don't want to comment about the other companies because, syempre, they have their own technology, but this is our top-of-the-line technology. Okay. In this case, though, because so far what we've discussed are we have PRK as one of the earliest versions of LASIK, and it's still being done now. Mm -hmm. And we have the Femto Laser Bladeless LASIK, which is mm -hmm. what is the standard at this point. It's what a lot of people have been using for the past few years. Mm -hmm. And then we have Supercore, which is the kind of LASIK that you use if you're 40 and above and you don't want to wear reading glasses anymore. Yes, correct. And then of course, which is also an interesting uh, in development when it comes to refractive surgery, is of course your ICL, which is what you were saying. It's a contact lens that you put into your eye and that's what gives you the clarity of vision that you're looking for. Na it's it's parang the right option for you if one tap kasi laser and siguro two if you're looking for something that has more clarity. And you were saying that if you are very much concerned about glare and um, uh, how quickly you're able to recover, then ISL is a good option. Lalo na kung mataas ang grado. Tama ba yun dog? Yes. So yung 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 laser surgery kasi iba kasi tinatanong ako. Ito Baka naman mababa ang grado ko, 150 lang, hindi na ako kailangan i-LASIK. The lowest treatment that the LASIK can do is 50 grade. Huh? If, you have, if you're having problems driving without glasses, kahit 75 grade mo, pwede ka magpa-LASIK. Okay. Now, yung ICL naman, they make uh, implantable contact lens kahit 50 grade, kahit 75 grade, pero yung range of treatment niya is from very low, 50, up to 1,800. Yung LASIK from 50 up to mga 7,800, hirap na eh. Hirap uh -huh. na. Lalong mataas lang pas 500, lalong hindi na kasing accurate yung LASIK kasi marami na siyang tatanggalin eh. So uh -huh. yung ICL, it doesn't matter kay, kay 1,000 ka o 100 ka, is the same contact lens inside the eye. So what makes the ICL better is number one, the most important feature of ICL is we did not remove anything from your eye. The LASIK, remember, we will cut the flap and we will remove cornea. Yung ICL, we're not removing anything. I'm just, papatong ko lang yung contact lens sa loob ng mata mo, that's it. Takes 10 minutes to do. So, it is a procedure that is additive and not subtracting. We don't subtract anything. Okay. Number two is the quality of vision is sharper than LASIK or PRK. It is similar to, I tell patients, most patients that come here, they they were contact lens during the day, and at the end of the day, they remove the contact lens, they were glass at night. So you know the difference between your vision with the contact lens and with glasses. Kahit pareho yung grado, mas malinaw yung contact lens kaysa glasses. So ito yung... What you're seeing in the Facebook now is the ICL. It's a rectangular shape, soft contact lens we put in the eye. So the ICL is slightly sharper than LASIK. Just like your contact lens is slightly sharper than your eyeglasses for the same range. So sharpness, additive, not subtractive, and reversible. Ibig sabihin yan, kung hindi ka masaya, pag tilanggal ko yan, you're back to your original eye. The okay. LASIK is not reversible. Okay. No? So, better vision. Kaya, if you do research outside, I mean, as I said, in US, Japan, Korea, na marami mataas grado, in China, many people choose ICL because it's it's the sharper option. No? So, kung, kung may, may tao pupunta dito 300, pasado siya sa LASIK, pero gusto niya ICL. May mga tao na magpunta dito na, ah, sige, LASIK na lang ako, pasado naman ako, kahit din ako mag-ICL. And may mga tao na, bagsa ka sa LASIK, wala ka ng choice except ICL. So yun yung, those are the options. You will know all of that when you come for screening kasi I, I'm the one who's gonna explain to you the results eh. Anyway, okay? Okay. And then, Doc, siguro kasi uh, for a lot of people, lana the ones that have worn contactless, iisipin na lang, wait, wait a minute, contactless. So does that mean it just stays in my eye? Does it need any sort of maintenance? Or parang it's hard for people to imagine just placing something there and just keeping it there for the next couple of years. So this, the, the secret of this ICL is there's this company in the U.S. called STAR, S-T-A-R, STAR Surgical. They hold the patent for this material. There's this 
columnar material. Actually, the ICL is implantable columnar lens. It's not implantable contact lens, but people don't know what columnar is. Columnar is a collagen polymer. Collagen is in your muscles, in your joints, that's collagen. So it's a biologic material. This columnar that they develop is inert, meaning I can put it inside your eye and leave it there forever and it does not cause any damage to your eye and it is not damaged by your eye itself. Alam mo ba, pag nilagay mong implant sa loob ng katawan, di ba, your body can reject it. This one, the body doesn't reject it. Yes. That's why ICL is an investment in your eye Now you can leave it. The longest ICL in the eye in the world is like 25 years. So if patients ask, how long has this technology been there? There are patients who had it like 25 to 28 years ago. So, nandun pa rin sa mata nila, pero tumanda na sila. So, pag cataract surgery, natanggalin. Pero, that's how long the ICL has been around. But, it's not as famous as Lacey. Because, number one, not all doctors are trained to put ICL. So, may few doctors in the world who are trained to do it, who have the skill to do it, and the resources to do it. So, Hindi siya popular everywhere. But sa amin, syempre, we have everything here. So we give you the choice. And then it's up to you to choose whichever one fits your lifestyle or what. No? Pero it's something that is worth the investment in your eye. If you're looking for the best, if you're thinking, ano yung best para sa mata ko? Ito yun. Ito yung pinakamaganda. Okay. And now, kasi doc, for sure, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of patients that have been thinking about getting LASIK done. And then now, yun nga, sabi mo, meron na kasi tayong time eh. More, a lot of people might have hesitated before kasi, ah, uh, para ayoko mag-absent sa office. But no. now, it's uh, during this transition, we're moving from enhanced community quarantine to general quarantine. And hopefully, as our... Uh, our cities and our government is able to adjust and our cities are able to recover, then syempre meron ng uh, a little bit more freedom of movement within the city. So technically, pwede ka nang pumunta, bumalik na, magpa-check up, pwede ka nang magpa -lace. Pero for the people who are scared of the idea of lalabas ako, pupunta ako sa center, pero may COVID-19 pa rin, uh, what are the things that are being done to keep patients safe? So, um, First, this trend of having LASIK, we noticed this for since mid-May in Japan, in Korea, and in China. Na notice nila in Hong Kong. Na notice nila na parang kasi yung COVID. We know the precautions are if you're above sixty, kalalabas sa bahay, di ba? Pero yung mga young people kasi, as long as you're careful. Of course, I don't. I. I don't say na parang bahala na, wag ka mag-mask. No? When you go out of the house, mask, wash your hands, precautions pa rin. Pero they notice na the people who've been working all their life, they're busy with office, they cannot they cannot uh, be absent from work. Ngayon sila pupunta sa mga eye doctor nila at nagpapascreen ng lazy. Kaya yung lazy trend parang biglang for the past month, biglang umangat. So nagugulat kami lahat kasi yung mga matatanda na iliwan sa bahay, yung mga young people lang pwede lumabas eh. So, wala silang door. So, pupunta sila ngayon, like dito, magpapascreening na sila. Number one, magpapascreening. Number one, pwede na silang mag-off ng contact lens, no? Kasi when you come for screening, we want you to be off contact lens for at least five to seven days. So, soft contact lens, five to seven days. Hard contact lens, three weeks. No yes. contact lens, just glasses. Eh, kung nagtatrabaho sila, they don't wanna, they don't wanna sacrifice, no? Yes. So, yun, nasa bahay lang sila, they're wearing glasses, di pwede na sila magpascreening. And then, pwede na kayo mag-lazy, di ba? So, ngayon yung time, tapos may recovery time pa sila, nasa bahay lang sila. So, ngayon, uh, maraming time everybody. Number two is, dito kasi sa amin, uh, actually all places, of course, have PPE, we do all the precautions and all that. But if you come to our facility, especially here in our main facility in Rockwell, we are in the FINMA building. We're not inside a mall. And we're not inside a hospital. So we have our own building here. And of course, the building has their own precautions. But not being in the hospital means that there are no other sick people here. Only eye patients are coming to this building. So, hindi ka mahalo sa mga uh, maglalabs for COVID, 
or may pneumonia or what, hindi ka mahahawa doon kasi office building ito. Eh. Number two ah. is, um, yung building namin, ever since 2001, we we retrofit, we, we fit, we may fitted out our building in the first place. Dati, kami lang yung, kami, uh, siguro until now, kami lang yung stand-alone center na yung air condition namin sa loob ng operating room is uh, what we call a laminar airflow. Yung sterile, yung sinasabi nilang uh, positive pressure, meron kaming ducting. So, if you see the, that's our laser room, no, in the picture, you see that we have two lasers. The black one on the left it is the Victus femtosecond laser. That's for uh, cutting the flap and that's for cataract. So kung gusto mag-cataract surgery na bladeless, yan yung gagamitin. And the laser on the right is the pe uh, eczema laser for the grado. Lazy, PRK, Supracore. If you see the room on top, sa ceiling ng room, nakikita nyo yung parang mesh na square. Yan yung mm -hmm. airflow namin. Since 2001, kami lang yung may HEPA filter sa loob ng operating room namin at laser room namin. So, kasi yung gumawa ng design ng center namin, gusto nila na yung, yung air quality is as good as a semiconductor facility. Yung walang particulates na lumulutang-lutang. So, yung, yung, yung laser rooms namin, operating rooms namin, lahat yun, malinis yung air na umiikot. Hindi ito parang mall na yung air ay eh, yung parang split type. Yung parang sa bahay nyo, di ba? Yung split type na air code. Hindi ganyan yung ginagamit namin sa loob ng okay. laser room. Okay. Okay. So malinis. Oh, okay. Okay. Kaya yun ang, yun ang matatutuwa yung mga patient pag nalaman nila. Kahit yung mga oldies nagpapakatara. Kasi malinis yung hangin eh. At least hindi kami nagdadagdag ng additional restraint nyo. So we're not in the mall and we're not in the hospital. And we have this air air uh, filtering system that's very clean. Nakikita mo, the bed is under that filtering system. You see, the laser bed is under. So, whatever is blowing down on you is clean air. So, uh, rest assured, uh, aside from the usual COVID testing that we require, PPE, we have these other things that make you safe when you come to us. I think one of the things that I've noticed when I've uh, visited the clinic is that uh, some some patients were surprised kasi sa labas pa lang ng clinic para daw silang papasok ng airport yung level of security and the number of checks and the number of times they're checked for their temperature and all the disinfecting mats they're doing the survey and then when they come up to the to the clinic itself they have another layer of their uh, further checking and of course for everyone that does the visit the requirement for us is that you definitely have to be wearing the mask it's not just for our safety but also for yours kasi syempre papa check up ka uh, we want to make sure that uh, everyone stays safe and hindi naman madaming tao may encounter mo we limited to about uh, six to eight in the hour that you're you're, you're with us and yeah. siguro, like, with what you discussed doc that one of the scariest things siguro about covid is that uh it it could be a surface it could be some it could be something that i touch so what you're telling us now is that with this laminar airflow when you enter the or room yung hangin no miikot isn't it's, it's it isn't like the air uh that you would get just regularly within the building we take that air we purify it and then the way that it flows pa it ensures na um no vent and uh, lumalabas sa vent any other particles that could be floating in the air so every, anything that blows in your direction is clean it's pure air so kami kasi we actually nung when we built this in year 2001 this aircon system it was like overkill before there was no covid uh -oh. before nobody was thinking about this everybody just had this split type aircon in their operating room it was like overkill now that there's this disease which is airborne, then it suddenly became advantageous that we had this in the first place. Parang ganon. And uh, for us kasi, we also, we, we take precautions because not only do you, we not want na yung pasyente mahawa sa ibang pasyente. Siyempre kami rin, takot din kami mahawa sa pasyente. So gusto namin maraming layer of checks. We, we, when we call you, we have an interview, merong questionnaire, ganon. I mean, that's as far as we do, no? And then before surgery, we require a COVID test for everybody undergoing surgery. So it's for your own good and for our good also.
So I think Audrey has is I know having difficulty. I think we're having difficulty, but let me just continue talking while uh, while our host is not here. So first is uh, we are here to serve our patients. No? So uh, uh, what we want to convey to everybody is right now, correcting your grade or glasses is a very common procedure, no? just like liposuction, just like facelift just like anything and lifestyle now demands that uh, parang gusto mo number one the most effective for correcting your vision number two the safest option and number three the most painless and quickest recovery actually lahat ngayon ng patient gusto fast quick and sigurado sigurista lahat ng tao so kami naman we're here to do first we have all the equipment that you will ever need to screen you and to do your laser surgery or okay. icl surgery i have all the options here available whether you go to the us to japan the philippine doctors are not behind the international standard so we offer everything that you can find in singapore in hong kong in japan uh, we just need to test you to know which one is the best option. So I give you the choice. Kung pasado ka kasi sa lahat, you can choose it. Pero if you fail in this, but you're qualified in this, then we will tell you. Most patients choose LASIK because it's the quickest recovery and it's more famous than the PRK and ICL. But those that know how to do research know that ICL offers the better vision. No. Now, those that are above 40, we have an option now for them called Supracore. Previously, we don't we didn't have anything. You just have the LASIK for far vision and you're stuck with reading glasses. So, uh, we have all the options for you and we make sure it's safe. We give you a safe environment. Uh, me, I not only me, there are other doctors here who do LASIK in Asian eye. So, Siyempre, I, I'm not, I'm in, sometimes I'm in a satellite in Trinoma, but there are doctors here, sometimes I'm in surgery. There. So every day there will be a doctor here available for consultation, for screening. And you have a choice. You can have me, you can have them as your surgeon, but we're all qualified to do your surgery. No? So uh, there's, uh, there's quite a number of questions coming out yes. from the people that are watching us today. Mm -hmm. So here's one that I saw interesting. Sabi ni Ms. M, ni M. Ang, can I do a repeat LASIK if I've already done it before? So the repeat LASIK is what we call a touch-up or enhancement. Many people, uh, some, if you had LASIK more than 10 years ago, uh, maybe you nag changed the grade mo, or tumanda ka na, or naging 45 or 50 years old ka na. So a LASIK touch-up can be done as long as we have an, a CT scan or an OCT to measure your corneal thickness. Kasi babawasan pa namin eh. So we need to know if pwede pa namin bawasan. And kung makapal pa yung cornea mo, yes, you can have a touch-up safely. Now, if you were 45 years, alimbawa, you had LASIK when you were 30, and now you're 48 years old, 18 years later, and now you're wearing reading glass. And then naghahanap ka, paano yan? Nag reading glass na ako. Punta ka dito kasi meron kaming supra-core. So yung mga na-LASIK na before, and gusto mo wag mag reading glass, I have supracore for you. I can do supracore so that your near vision improves. So even if you had LASIK before, you can have a touch-up to improve your FAR 
or you can have supracore to improve your reading. So it's not hopeless. Merong, merong choice. But again, I need to screen you. No? So you come for screening. Doc, here's another question naman. Um, a court from Do Domingo Kakimbal. I'm uneasy with my sight. I use eyeglasses even around three meters away from my TV to see it clearly. Yeah. Uh, around how much would it cost me to correct my sight? I'm 80, 68 years old. So medyo matanda na this particular patient. Okay, so uh, let me explain. So the age of the patient is uh is a factor in choosing what type of treatment for you for mm -hmm. example usually when you reach 18 to 20 we consider you an adult na. that's why lasik begins at 18. Okay. you don't do lasik if you're 16 17 i wait so if you want to be a pilot i i prefer to put an icl on you because that's the clearest if you want to land the plane you can see okay. it clearly no yes. so 18 to 20 is adult age and you can have lasik when you reach 40 years old, that's pressed myopia age or need for reading glasses. When you reach 60 years old, that's cataract age. So you probably will have grade astigmatism, but also cataract. So paglampas ng 60, we would rather recommend cataract surgery and we put a new lens in your eye that you can see near and you can see far. So Masosolve din namin yan, but with the lens implant na. Hindi ICL, it's a lens implant for cataract surgery. And we have a laser for that here, no? We have a Victus laser for cataract surgery too. So you come here, actually no matter what age you are, kahit na 75 years old na kayo, if you want your vision fixed, you just come here to Asian Eye and we can check you, no? Walang, walang age to, my oldest, my oldest patient for cataract surgery, like 93 years old, eh, so... Um, age will not be a factor if you want vision to improve. Just come here. Okay, so that's good to know because I'm sure there are a lot of older patients that are thinking about, paano ba to? Parang do I just, kailangan ko na lang bang tanggapin na basta tumatanda, lumalabo. But you're saying that no, that is not the case. Exactly. With the technological advancements now, it's not as big an issue as before. Yes, and may laser kami parang dyan kung ayaw mong blade. Kung ayaw mong blade, cataract surgery, meron kaming kami yung only a few centers in the Philippines have this laser system for cataract surgery. So again, at siguro a benefit for a patient like that would be, again, it's faster recovery. Kasi yeah. hindi, siya, ano eh, hindi siya as traumatizing to the eye as having to use the blade. Yeah. And I hear, Doc, there's another question. I've read somewhere that you need to have stable grade of eyesight to be qualified for LASIK. What if I haven't been active in monitoring my eye grade, meaning hindi niya ina-upgrade yung glasses niya for a while, can I still be a good candidate for LASIK? Uh, first, uh, when you, that is true na we want your vision stable. But then usually, as I said, when you reach 18 to 20, your grade doesn't jump higher, as high as when you were in your teenage years. So nung teenager ka, I'm sure napansin mo, nung 12 years old ka, pagdating mo na 13 and a half, para ng 100, 150, pagdating mo na 15, dagdag na 100. Pero pagdating mo ng 18 to 20, kung gagalaw man yung grade mo, 75, 50, and if you're still wearing the same glasses for the past four years, then most likely your grade didn't change much. So okay. in terms of history, malamang hindi ka na change much. Second is, meron kaming machines dito that can measure the stability of your cornea, kung matibay ba o hindi. So mga counter-check din naman namin yan. So, Meron coming way to check, but we also ask your history. No? Very rare kasi yung tao na lampas 22 or 25 na na, every year, talong pa ng talong ng 100. Bihirang bihira yun. Bihira uh, bihira. So siguro, the thing for this particular patient is that, you know, even if you haven't had your eyes checked in a while, this is a good time to get it done. So mm -hmm. specifically, when you come and ask for the LASIK screening, para you know, what the condition of your eye is na, and the doctor can tell you afterwards if LASIK is the right option or if you would need to go and do maybe ICL or baka because you have a thin cornea, maybe PRK might also be an option for you. So again, come in. Come in for a checkup. At least you'll, you'll find out what your options are. Huwag kayong matakot sa app. Hindi kami dito hard sell. In Asian I when you come here, when you come here, hindi ka namin pinipilit na mag-oo kagad today and decide for surgery. So people come here have screening, and then after two to three months, that's when they call back. Hindi namin kayo pinipilit kasi 
hindi kami ganun eh, parang, oh, you, you want screening, they will screen you. And then we give it the options, and then it's up to you if you want to have it done here, done elsewhere, or done next time. Hindi kami namimilit dito. And hindi rin kami, ano, parang, meron kasing patient na nag-complain sa akin na, sabi niya na pag sa iba raw, parang, ah, bibigyan ka ng price na ganito, and then pagdating mo doon, pag gagawin pag, pag oo ka na iba pala yung price ng procedure mo kasi ina upsell ka to something else kami iisa lang ang presyo namin na kung, kung kung ano man yan ito yung hindi kami parang bait and switch na tinatawag hindi kami ganoon so kami kung qualified ka ito yung procedure ito yung cost hindi yung ah, pagpasan pag nandito ka na mas mahal pala yun hindi mo lang alam or we don't charge based on grade na pag 200 grade ka mas mura pag 600 grade ka mas mahal yung laser mo hindi Pareho lang naman yung laser na gagamitin namin eh. So we don't do that. No, As kami, it's good to know, siguro, for people that are worried. Ito, oh. this is an interesting question. Uh, Yal Villar Villarte is asking, kapag lazy eye po ba, di na pwede sa lasik? Ang lazy eye kasi is a concept wherein uh, your vision did not develop to 100%. Bakit nangyayari yan? Kasi visual development, yung paglinaw ng mata mo happens, during your first 7 to 10 years of life. So, nung bata ka. So, for example, nung bata ka, yung isang mata mo, 400. Yung isa mo one, isang mata mo, 100 grade. Magkaiba. And hindi ka na-check yung grado mo nung bata ka. Hindi ka na-bigyan ng tamang salamin. Then, your brain will selectively choose the 100 and isosuppress niya yung grade na yung mata na 400. So, yung mata na 400, hindi siya nag-develop to see 100%. So, pag lumampas ka ng 10 years old, tsaka ka nagpagawa ng salabi na 100 and 400, yung pala ito 100% vision, ito 70% lang. Kasi hindi nag-develop yung lakas ng mata. Permanent ang lazy eye. So, kahit na ayusin ko yan, gawin kong zero yung gray, lazy eye pa rin yun. Mas mahina pa rin yun than the other eye. So, Unfortunately, lazy eye occurs because when you were young, hindi nag-develop yung true vision mo. Hindi kayang ayusin ng gradient pag adult na. Okay. So siguro that's uh, a good prompt for, uh, for for parents that when they have young children, it's important to get your to get your child's eyes checked kasi every year, lalo na when they start school. Kasi when they start school, doon lalalabas yung kailangan na sila magbasa ng mas madalas, baka gumagamit na sila ng gadget. So those are the things that Doc was saying na nakaka-affect yun sa grado. Na yes, your genetics determine a large percentage of what your eye grade is. But at the same time, how do you use your eyes? Ba baka lagi siya napapagod, lagi siya nagagamit. So those are things that might increase your grade even though your parents don't have glasses themselves mm -hmm. so again for parents if you're worried at all just get your your child uh, to a pediatric ophthalmologist get them checked every year so by the time they reach 18 and they decide um, mom dad i want to get lasik done then it's still an option for them mm -hmm. so and I, i'd like to think that for a lot of the parents with very young children by the time they turn 18 baka mas maganda pa nga yung technology at the time so what we're trying to do is how do we maintain their eye condition, how do we maintain the health of their eyes so that by the time they choose that that option, it's available to them and it's something that they can do um, comfortably without any other fears of any other eye problems, siguro, that might keep them from being able to do that. Yeah. And then here, Doc, um, another question that came from An Yao. Uh, do I need to make any preparations prior to uh, I think evaluation? So I think she's talking about the LASIK screening here. Uh, the only thing you need to do is, if you're a soft contact lens wearer, five to seven days before your scheduled appointment, just wear glasses to rest your cornea. And if you're a rigid gas permeable or what we call hard contact lens, three weeks is the ideal time. Kasi pag tinigil mo yung contact lens mo, yung cornea mo babalik yung original shape and babalik yung original grade. And yung original shape and grade, yan ang gusto namin i mm -hmm. Hindi yung artificial because of the contact lens. Okay. No, so, other, so that, no other preparation except that. 
Okay, so siguro when you're trying to schedule for your LASIK screening, that's something that you'll have to count. Exactly how many days you'll need to be resting your eyes before you come in to see us. The good thing is you can just call us up very easily. Or you can go to our website or, or see us on Facebook and you can inquire. You'll find out what days Dr. Ang is available and what day that you could have your LASIK screening done para you can schedule accordingly. And then here, Doc, here's a, another interesting question. Okay ba na kapag nagpa-LASIK screening ako, uh, the same day, uh, LASIK operation na? Are there any risks involved in same day screening and operation? We, I personally do not recommend same day. Number one, there are two reasons. Number one is we dilate your eye to check your retina. So that's a very important part of screening. People with high grade have long eyeballs. Pag mahaba yung eyeball mo, yung retina mo manipis. So kung manipis yung retina mo, may chance na merong punit, may manipis. So we need to check that before you're actually lazy. Kasi kung kailangan remedyohan yung with a procedure, pwede. So pag dilated ang mata mo at nilagay kita sa ilalim ng laser, hindi ma-activate yung tracker. Yung tracker na dapat mag-track pag gumagalaw ang mata mo, hindi niya makakatch yung mata mo. So, hindi okay yon na dilated ka to undergo LASIK. The second one is, during screening, we put drops in your eye, mm -hmm. and those drops can weaken your cornea. So, part of the LASIK is cutting a flap. E baka magasgas yung mata mo pag kinat yung flap kung same day. Pwede the next day. Pero ako, hindi ko kagawin yan same day. For your eyes sake, eh magantay ka na lang the next day. Ah, uh, okay. And then here, Doc, here's another question. Uh, minimum age requirement for LASIK. So this, Doc, I know that you mentioned it earlier, but for the benefit of our, the ones watching us right now. Usually 18. 18, many, you know, the many patients come to me, parents bring them because it's after high school, either mm -hmm. regalo sa kanila ng parents nila yon, mm -hmm. or uh, talagang matas grado, ayaw na nila magsalamin, or marami ring pa, magpapilot, marami ito, magpipma, magpapilot school, no? yung mga lilipat na sa abroad for studying, gusto nilang gawin na itong procedure now, before, so it's a transition time in your life, and 18 to 20 years old is actually a good time to do it, no? kasi the earlier actually you do your surgery, mas matagal yung buhay mo na may enjoy mo yun eh. Kaysa uh -huh. yung mas matanda ka, eh, biniyara mo na rin yun eh. Uh -huh. Yung matagal mo gagamitin. Mm -mm. And then here, Doc, siguro ito, this is an interesting question um, about ICL. Kasi we all know that syempre, ang concept natin ng contact lens, it's the soft contact lens na kailangan mong ingatan kasi kapag pinasok or tinatanggal mo siya, it can tear. So the question here is, can ICL tear? Is no. Something that would happen. No, the, the good thing about ICL is even if I twist it around and I pull it, hindi siya napupunit. And it's maintenance free. Once I put it in your eye, hindi siya parang your regular contact lens nagkakaroon ng deposits, di ba? Meron kang solution to clean it, may maintain uh, every night. Ito hindi. Once it's inside your eye, there's no maintenance, it's not damaged. And even if you rub your eye, you exercise, you do martial arts, it won't damage it because it's soft and it's inside your eye. So it does not restrict you from sports. It does not restrict you from swimming, uh, activities, rubbing, ganon. No, walang ganon. So that's that's the reason why it's very, very popular overseas, no? Kasi uh, because of those, parang very care, carefree siya. Wala, walang masyadong maintenance needed, walang precautions needed. The only important thing about ICL is we need to do important measurements. And when we measure you, there are certain machines that we have that do that. No? And, uh, and then we, the sizing of, there's a size, eh, parang the contact, yung contact lens sa labas ng mata, walang size, yung grado lang yun. Eh. May curvature at merong grado. Yung implantable contact lens, may curvature, may grado at may size. So this size, we measure here. I, I personally measure each eye because it's a custom-made lens. After we measure you, grade and size, we send it to California and they will make the lens. No, they, there's a, they will 
make each lens and send it up. That's why it's custom made. Mas, mas ideal, mas tama yung grado for you. May, may, may waiting time lang. So, for patients who uh, want ICL, we usually tell them to wait two to three weeks because two weeks to manufacture and one week to ship to Manila. So, may waiting time of three weeks. Okay. And then, Doc, how, uh, here's another question. How many days is the validity of your eye screening? So, kapag nagpalisik screening ako today, how long can I wait before my screening, before my surgery can be done? Usually, uh, I will, your, your screening is valid for three months. After three months, we need to repeat some of the tests. Not all of the three to four hours, but maybe two or three tests we need to repeat just to update the data. Pero, once you qualify for screening, you're qualified kahit na for the next year or so, no? Kasi nga, as I said, may kanya-kanyang schedule mga tao, ibang tao, ah, may pa akong ganito, may pa akong gagawin, or sa same way ko na, yung mga ganon. So, or some people naman. need to travel for work, yung mga ganon. Dati kasi, di ba, ngayon wala na nagtatravel, pero dati, ah, may trip, may trip ako sa beach, hindi ako pwede mag-swimming for one month, eh. so pagkatapos ko na mag-beach, tsaka ako magpapalasik, di ba? Hindi, eh, wala, wala. Lahat ngayon, lahat ngayon, stock eh. We're all stock. Ito, Doc. Um, here's another question naman from Karen Joy Villegas Panganiban. Who are recommended for LASIK procedure? What is the grade of the eyes that, that you can say you are recommended for LASIK? So, everybody can have LASIK. Everybody who wants na bet, uh, parang I, you would rather not wear glasses or contact lenses na Everybody is everybody can have LASIK as long as you're qualified. The grade okay. usually is from 100 to around 700. After 700 or 600, I will usually push you to do ICL na. Hmm. If you're between 100 to 600, choice mo yun. Pero pag lampas mo ng 6 to 700, usually... I will tell you that the advantage has swung to ICL. So, doon na ang better for you. Pero yung nga, depende sa'yo. Kung ganong kataas ang grado mo, eh talagang worth it mag-ICL kasi yung taas ang grado mo eh. Uh -uh. And then, Doc, uh, there's a question here about how much is eye screening? So, let's say if they wanted to get basic screening done, around how much would they need to prepare? I think our eye screening here is about 4,000 plus. For between about 4 to 3, 6, mga ganang doxy. So that's uh, the screening test. No? So it takes about 3 to 4 hours. So just be ready na hindi siya, hindi siya sandali lang. Maraming tests, mga 12 tests. Eh. So maraming tests. Okay. Here, Doc, here's an interesting question also. Which option is best for me? Uh, who has dry eye syndrome? I've read hormonal changes affect our vision. If I am a good candidate, is it okay to do the procedure even if I'm currently breastfeeding? So, if you're pregnant, you cannot have any surgery. If you just gave birth, I suggest you wait two months after, after you give birth. Even if you're still breastfeeding, you can have screening uh, two, beyond two months after you give birth. That way, your hormonal levels have have leveled off. You know? So, wal wala namang uh, uh, ibang precaution except the hormones. So, uh, pwede. Ngayon, kung may dry eye ka, this is very common kasi maraming patient, alam mo, one of the one of the side effects of 10 years, 15 years of wearing contact lenses, soft or hard contact lens, is it rubs on your cornea and damages your conjunctiva. And dry eye is a very common uh para side effect or after effect of long term contact lens. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. LASIK itself makes the eye dry temporarily in everybody, whether you wear a contact lens, wear glasses, wear LASIK itself makes your eye dry for about six to twelve months. If you are wearing contact lenses before, then whatever dryness you have, the LASIK temporarily adds to it. But usually you go back to the same level after 12 months as you were before the LASIK. So if your dry eye was bearable before LASIK, then you go back to that bearable state. But of course, during the healing period, you're more dry. If you, PRK has less dryness and ICL has even less dryness. 
Okay. So, kung dry eye problem ka, eh, mag-ICL ka na nga. And then siguro, uh, I remember, Doc, that you mentioned, uh, one of the things that happens after you get LASIK done, kasi is that they give you, syempre, antibiotics, and also kasama na doon would be artificial tears. Yes. So, that's why it's important, and you always you say this quite often, that you have to put the artificial tears often, especially yes. while you're healing. Actually, uh, all all patients, whether LASIK, ICL, cataract surgery, I tell them that once we touch your eye, once ginalaw namin yung mata mo, may dryness na mangyayari after, even temporarily. You will feel itchy, mabilis mapagod, mapulag, so may pikit mata. Pareho yan sa mga taong long-term contact lenses. Alam, I, you know what I'm talking about, na parang pagod ka na, gusto mo ipikit mata mo, inaanto ka kasi gusto mo ipikit mata mo. So, you just use artificial tears. So, even if you're not going to have LASIK, you can buy artificial tears and use it in your eye and there's no side effect to it. It actually will do you good. So, art, artificial tears are highly recommended for everybody, especially long long hours of computer work, no? Or playing. Yeah. Ito, Doc. So, here uh, we have one more question. Can ICL address astigmatism too? Yes. ICL, LASIK, PRK, they can address astigmatism up to 600. So, it, it, uh, LASIK is grade up to six to 700 and astigmatism up to around 500. ICL is if you have grade up to 1,800 and up to 600 astigmatism. Okay. So most, we, we really need to treat astigmatism. Actually, we need to treat astigmatism. No? Kung may astigmatism ka, eh, pagawa mo na kasi, uh, like, if you have high astigmatism, I would choose the, yung zyoptics sa sinasabi ko, yung wavefront guide. It's sobrang accurate yung sa astigmatism correction. Okay. And then, uh, one more question, Doc. Can ICL be done while the patient is awake? Well, usually, it, LASIK, you're definitely awake. ICL, you can be awake, but from my experience, people want to be asleep. When we touch your eye, you don't want to feel it, and then you're moving around, no? So, kami, some doctors, they, they do it while the patient's awake. Of course, if you insist, I'll do you awake, no? But our routine here in Asian Eye is, it's 10 minutes, you're asleep half hour. Pagkatapos ng gising ka, then you go home. But you, you probably won't want to be scared, no, during surgery. That's why you uh, sleep is the fear, no? Of you, and you don't want to be moving. Okay. So, siguro yun. Uh, so, we actually had quite a number of questions for you, Doc. So, uh, we, we went a little bit over time what we usually have for Facebook Live. But it's, again, it's to give our patients an opportunity to ask you questions they might not have thought to ask you when they visited us or they haven't visited us yet and they've been already thinking about LASIK or these options. Yeah. So, today we talked about so many different options that we have aside from LASIK and as well as the different kinds of LASIK that can be done for patients. And siguro, if there's anything that you want you to remember, it's that, you know, you can get LASIK done. This time might actually be a very good time for you to get it done. Kasi nga, you're going to have time to be able to recover, to give mm -hmm. yourself an extra few days to get used to your new clear vision once you get LASIK. And then if you're worried, if you're not sure about what to get, uh, what kind of uh, procedures right for you, get screened. Because that's the best way, and it's your, your opportunity to ask Dr. Ang all your questions. Because a lot of the fear I find of patients before they get surgery done is because they haven't asked all possible questions that they wanted to ask from their doctor. So as you've seen during our Facebook Live, Dr. Ang is very much willing to discuss with you about all the different factors to consider when you're going to get any sort of eye surgery. And again, we all know that COVID is a very serious concern, and for a lot of us, we don't want to be moving around. You don't want to be going to places where there are a lot of people. So it's good that you know that we're able to mm -hmm. tell you that if you visit Asian Eye, kaunti lang may encounter mo. They're all eye patients pa. And then when you get and you choose to get the surgery done, uh, you when you undergo the, uh, the LASIK screening, it's very comprehensive. So unfortunately, medyo matagal, but on the other side, it's very thorough. So if you have any sort of history of eye problem, it's a good time to bring it up. And at the same time, makikita ni Doc yan eh. Ma mapapansin niya through all these different tests if there are certain conditions that need to be addressed first 
or those conditions determine kung anong klaseng surgery that you will be taking. So these are the things that you can think about. And at the same time, once you've decided to get it done on a specific day, you can enter the OR with peace of mind. Because one of the things we don't want you to feel is nervous or scared. It's normal to have a little bit of jitters for any kind of surgery. But one thing we don't want you to have to think about is, am I safe here? Uh, should I be worried about the air quality or who will be handling me? Uh, it, it, it might seem overkill for a lot of uh, our patients when they visit us. I hear it a lot. Medyo OA kayo, no? Yung grabe yung uh, uh, worrying and the, the checking and rechecking of protocols. So you'll, you'll notice you have several different doctors asking you certain questions. Pag minsan umuulit yung questions. And I find that that's a, a key feature for a lot of the doctors to make sure that they've asked you enough questions to determine exactly what you're feeling and what your condition is for your eye or any other complaints you might have. At the same time, it's good feedback for your doctor. So by the time that you ask your doctor some questions, mas, mala mas maganda yung background niya. And they have a better feel of the kind of uh, worries that you might have about your condition. And if you're if you're the type of person naman na kunyari, nahihirapan ka to think of the questions you want to ask about LASIK or about any of your eye conditions, bring uh, bring a family member. We At this point, we allow one companion to visit with us when you're uh, doing a checkup at Asian Eye. And you can have your companion kind of sit with you and help you kind of think of, of these questions so that when Dr. Ang is there, you can maximize your time. And when you feel comfortable enough, you feel uh, comfortable enough to schedule a surgery, we can have it done fairly quickly. Take the time that you need, get your our requirements done we do require um some some screenings to make sure that we have our covid protocols in place so that's something for you to also consider but at the same time just realize that we're doing that to keep you safe so we just want to make sure that uh we keep you safe and we keep the medical staff safe so that we can continue to serve as many patients as possible as we're moving out of the community quarantine uh, so thank you, Doc. Uh, Pasensya na, we know that you had a lot of surgeries today, uh, but we had a lot of patients kasi asking you questions. Thank you for spending time with us today. Yeah, thank you to the audience. And uh, a final word for me is, um, uh, first is you, uh, when you think about correcting your vision, you know, rest assured that here, we have all the equipment, all the precautions, and the skill level to take good care of you. We have a complete set of options, so we don't push you to one option that we have. We have all the options. So whatever is mas bagay sa mata nyo, you will get it. So um, you're free to come anytime, and uh, we want we want Asian Eye to be your first choice in eye care because we're here to take care of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching us today. And if you're interested in LASIK, we do have a couple of promos coming up. So if you're curious about it, please give us a call. Schedule your screening as, uh, as quickly as you can, and we'll be able to tell you about more details, specifically about the discount we're going to have for our LASIK surgery. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Bye-bye.